a little introduction into who I am and how I come to be a vegan activist, animal rights activist. I haven't always been this way. I haven't always been um, a good boy. I went down the wrong track for many years, like many years, a decade. And I had an epiphany when I was imprisoned. Part of that epiphany was becoming sober, realizing the error of my ways. And I started to right the wrongs of my past. Okay, so I've been living in amends ever since. And part of that is helping those who can't help themselves. I always wanted to help people. And that was a, I thought that was a noble thing to do. But then I realized there was a group of beings who needed my help more and they couldn't speak for themselves. They were screaming and no one was listening. So I decided to help animals. Uh, I become vegan after a series of events, really a bizarre series of events. And it was mainly due to my clear mind and pulling myself away from the environment that I was in. So that's the short story. It went for a lot longer than that, but we don't have much time. When you talk about this subject with people, you are met with opposition. That op opposition stems from conditioning. We've been taught a certain way for many years. Whenever I've mentioned a vegan to non-vegans, they're always yeah. angry or laugh or just make yeah. fun of you. So my mum went vegan a year ago and yeah. she had a failing liver and yeah. fatty foods yeah. and actually cured it. And I made a status about that and I still had people I've grown up with attack me. So I was wondering why you think that is. Why, why is it? Yeah. We've been taught we need meat for, we need milk for, that something humane happens in a slaughterhouse. We've been taught all these things and we're fed lies. You look at a milk carton, you see a green pasture and you think that's the be all and end all of the dairy industry. They don't show you what happens in between. If the right person talked to them, they wouldn't think it was very funny if they seen a pig screaming for their life in a gas chamber. Yeah. No, but they just don't see that. So like, you have to look at it from like their perspective. Okay, people ridicule things they don't understand. And what can happen when you bring these subjects up to people is they have cognitive dissonance. Cognitive dissonance is the feeling associated with contradictory belief systems. Thank you. Also, um, my friend, like, she always asks me stuff about like veganism at school, but then like she gets mad at me. Cause she gets mad at you. Yeah. 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 I think because like she might feel like I don't know. Maybe she feels attacked or something like that, so she might get angry. But she just probably doesn't understand like. So give her some time. So your if your beliefs are contradicting your actions, you get an uncomfortable feeling in your tummy. Doesn't feel good. Feels a bit frustrating. Feels like, wait a second, I have these beliefs about animals. You're talking to 99% of society who agree animals should be treated morally. Well, because of the conditioning, right? And because people just don't understand what veganism actually is, yeah. it's about not stabbing animals for burgers. The core principle is about exploitation and where exploitation leads, okay? Individuals who would like seeing a dog be butchered in front of their eyes or even a pig, you know, they like, to, they like to, it to remain behind closed doors. But when you bring this up to them, Many excuses come up and it's almost like everyone has the same ones. But it's weird, like you might not even, even know any, any of these people. Okay, that might, they might be in America and you're over here in Adelaide. And they'll say exactly the same things to excuse the abuse that goes into their burger as the person in Adelaide does. And it's almost, it's very bizarre. The best way through that is to ask some questions, get them thinking. Yeah. Like how? How has everyone been taught the same thing? What is the number one excuse you hear? Someone shout it out. Protein. Protein? That's the number one. I'd probably say that's up there number one too. Because that's how they marketed it for so long. Meat for protein. You have to eat meat to get protein. You can't get protein without eating meat. You, it's just impossible. You will die. You will die. Five years ago, stopped eating meat. Not dead yet. And I think like the thousands of vegan bodybuilders would beg to differ. Uh, protein, where does it originally come from? It originally comes from plants. All protein originally comes from plants. Now the lion eats the deer. You might say, well, the lion ate the deer. They got their protein from the deer. Where did the deer get the protein from? Exactly, it all stems from plants. All the nutrients you need. So 
It's basically the same argument. What about iron? Well, you eat cows to get iron. Where did the cow get the iron from? Plants. All nutrients, nearly all nutrients. If the veg fruits and vegetables weren't sterilized and the water wasn't chlorinated, B12 would be on these fruits and vegetables and it would be in the water supply. You can supplement with B12, I think it's, it's important that everyone does. The animals are injected with it. But nutrients, all the, all the nutrients we need come originally from plants. Do you think it's moral to stab an individual to death to get the protein out of their flesh? Do you think it's moral to murder someone to get the iron out of their blood? We're drinking the blood of innocent beings to get iron. And there's no way around that. That's the truth. And I speak the truth. It's harsh. It sounds really like, come on, mate, that's a bit militant. No, it's not. It's the truth. Where do you think you're getting the iron from? The blood of innocent beings. So the question would be, do you think it's moral to stab someone to get iron? And all animals are stabbed. You should tell me an animal that doesn't get stabbed, actually. Maybe male baby chicks in the egg industry. You don't eat those male baby chicks, though. But fish get stabbed in the throat. Cows get stabbed in the throat. Pigs get stabbed in the throat. Okay? They're gas chambered first, or they're shot in the head first, or they're electro electrocuted first. But they're all stabbed in the throat. Why? To drain them of their blood. So they're all being stabbed in the throat. Okay? Now, people go to me, Joey, you're being animated and... You're trying to, you know, over-exaggerate. My words cannot over-exaggerate what happens to animals. You watch the footage. Watch the footage. My words don't do it justice or even come close to doing it justice. It's an absolute abomination. I could say, well, you know, there's iron in my blood. Do you think it's moral to stab me for the iron in my blood? And they're gonna say, well, no, because you're a human. Okay, okay, here we are. Humans and animals. There must be some massive difference between us. That makes it moral to stab a cow and not moral to stab a human being. What is that difference? We could say, okay, well, Joey, like, you know, humans are clearly more intelligent than cows. Cows don't have iPhones. We could say, well, not all humans are intelligent, are they? Some human beings are uh, born with a disability, aren't they? Do we treat them immorally? No, we don't. We protect them with human rights. Okay? Just because a cow might not be able to drive a car or use an iPhone, or you might think that you can do mathematics better than the cow, does not morally justify stabbing the cow to get iron. Because you would not apply that justification for stabbing me to get the iron out of my blood. You would call it an injustice. You would call it murder. But for some reason, we've made a distinction between cows and humans. And we've said, well, even though cows are the same in all the ways that matter, aren't they? Think of the ways that matter. Sentience. What is sentience? They are self-aware. They are conscious beings. There's someone inside of there. An individual with a personality experiencing their reality subjectively through their own eyes, through their own lens. Okay? Just like there's someone inside of you who gets scared, who gets hungry, who gets tired, escapes danger, avoids pain, you know, welcomes well-being. All animals want to experience well-being. They want to avoid pain and suffering. Okay, we have that in common with cows, pigs, fish, chicken, you name the animal. Okay, yeah, there are differences. There are, I'm not going to say we're all the same. There's differences between human beings as well. It doesn't justify treating one human differently from another. You can say animals, they're a different species. They look different to us. You know, cows, they look different to humans. You know, imagine if we use that type of discriminatory mindset against each other. We have in the past and we still do today. And it's what separates us. Speciesism. Okay, it's like racism, except it's to do with discriminating based on species. And it's usually human supremacy. Human supremacy to the point where we're like, we think we're that much better than animals that we can steal their children off of them, forcibly impregnate them, stab them to death and eat their body parts and use their skin as a sweater. Okay, that's what human supremacy does to animals. What does uh, racial supremacy do, do to other humans? Gas chambers, horrible stuff. We put pigs in gas chambers up here at Murray Bridge. I don't know if anyone's been to Murray Bridge. 
uh, to hear the pigs scream for their lives and beg for mercy inside of a gas chamber. It is absolutely heart-wrenching and you can't do nothing. Do you know why? Because it's legal. What we do to pigs in gas chambers is legal. If someone comes up to you and goes, yeah, but do I need protein after everything I just said then? We discriminate against animals, certain animals, based on species. Okay, it's usually human supremacy, but not always. Because how many people have a dog at home? Nearly everyone or has got a cat. You got some companion animal, a bird. Maybe you rescued a bird, maybe, you know. Most people have a dog. I always use dog because I've always been around dogs. You know, we, we all know the character of dogs. If anyone hurts a dog, oh my God, around Australia, kill the bloke, kill them. And, I've, and that, is not, that is not me saying that. You go to any Facebook video of someone abusing a dog, go through the comment section. Kill them, skin them alive. Do exactly what he did to that dog to him. True? Are they all vegans? Of course not. Of course not. They're just compassionate people and they don't see that they're applying one moral standard to dogs that they completely disregard when it comes to cows, pigs, fish, chicken, lambs that are on their plate that died, were murdered. They didn't just die naturally. They were murdered. They had their life robbed from them in a slaughterhouse. Disgusting place to slaughterhouse. So we discriminate based on species because of cultural conditioning. Okay, you go to Yulin, China, dogs are food. Okay, dogs aren't, I don't think dogs are food. I don't think pigs are food either. Okay, see what culture does? It, it conditions people to believe certain animals don't matter. And the root of all evil, the idea that some lives matter less. We can just stick, let's just stick on this intelligence thing because it's a really important point for everyone, even if you're, if you're not vegan, if you are vegan, it doesn't matter. This is a really important point. Children, would you say a four-year-old child is as intelligent as your average 30-year-old human? Of course not. Okay, they're very vulnerable too, children, aren't they? Vulnerable, they need to be protected, defended. If anyone touched a child, abused the child, it would be on. They'd be in prison or, you know, God help them. God help them. Animals, uh, pigs, let's just say pigs, they're around, a th they're, they're comparative with their intelligence to around a three-year-old child, let's just say. This is science speaking. I don't know if it's true. But let's just say for argument's sake, they've got about the mental capacity of a three-year-old child. They, they might be more intelligent, might have different intelligence. I don't know. We treat pigs like the worst criminals. We treat, we treat pigs worse than the child abuser. And they did nothing wrong. Pigs have done nothing wrong to any of us. Okay, and we treat them worse than the worst criminals on earth. Horrible. It's a really tough topic to talk about because this is the, basically the absolute raw truth of it. You need to know how to debate these uh, topics. You know, when people start going, oh, we're, we're smarter than animals, what do you say? Like, well, I'm smarter than four-year-olds. Should I go around killing four-year-olds and eating their bodies? Of course not. Like, who would, who would, who would even suggest that? Why does all logic go out the window when we start justifying animal abuse? You know why? Because they taste so good. Animals taste good. I, I get it. I do get it. But like, meat tastes good. They would usually say. Not people like to separate meat from the animal. It's easier for them. It's just the way they are. They just look at meat as meat as some inanimate product that just appeared in the supermarket. So they say meat tastes good. And I always correct them and say animals. You're saying animals taste good. The flesh of a, an animal that who had their life stolen from them tastes good. Taste is a sensory pleasure, sensory response. Basically like, okay, it happened to my tongue, sweet, salty. There's, there might be a little bit of fragrance. They might have used plants to flavor the flesh. They might say, well, well it tastes good. And I get that a lot. Who gets that a lot? You get that a lot? Tastes good. Okay, fair enough. I'm not saying that I quit eating animal products because I hate the taste of bacon double cheeseburgers. Okay, that's not why. I thought it tasted good too, but would it taste good if it was torn off the animal uh, raw? I don't know, a bit of fur and a bit of tendon and maybe if you had to kill the animal yourself and watch the blood drain out of them, would, would, would you still be hungry? I don't know. I don't know if that would taste very good. That would actually leave a bad taste in your mouth. But taste, using sensory pleasure to justify an immoral act. 
Where else does this happen? Sensory pleasure. Oh, that makes me feel good. But there's a victim involved. Okay? There's a victim involved and the attacker gains sensory pleasure from it. Now, I'm not saying there's they're a conscious attacker because that's not true. Not all people that consume animals are conscious animal abusers. But when you present them with some information and you might show them what's happening inside a slaughterhouse like we do with Anonymous for the Voiceless, which I recommend everyone get involved with, you show them and then they say, but it tastes good. They've seen the violence. They know that there's blood on their hands because the consumer pays for the violence to happen without the consumer's dollar. The violence goes away. And then they use taste to justify it. They then become a conscious animal abuser. Sorry, that's the truth. You are. There's second hand, obviously you're not abusing, going around abusing animals yourself. You pay someone else to do your dirty work, but like I did for 26 years, I'm, I mean, like I'm not like devoid, none of us. I don't know, if, who's been vegan their whole life? Okay, none of us have. Okay, we're all guilty of paying for someone to abuse animals. But a rapist, I hate saying that word, sorry if it triggered anyone, but it's true. A rapist will get sensory pleasure from an immoral act. Now you might go, Joey, oh my God, meat eating isn't the same as rape. I'm not saying that. If you think I'm saying that, you're not listening to me. An immoral act where you gain sensory pleasure, boom. An immoral act where you gain sensory pleasure, boom. That's the justification, sensory pleasure, taste for doing something horrible. And I'm sure like a human being's flesh with the right seasoning would taste really good too. Mince them up into a burger, you know, put some herbs in there, salt, pepper, garlic powder, you know, uh, some cheese on top, you know, maybe made from the breast milk of a human being. You know, you could make a human burger taste really good too. It wouldn't justify, you know, genociding human beings for your taste preference. And you can say again, Joey, well, what, you know, humans aren't animals. We went through that. What is the difference between us? What is the distinction? What is the moral distinction between us that justifies what we do to them? I, 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 I've been searching for one. Come on, you come at me. Where is this one? I've been, I've been five years searching for the moral justification for what we do to the most defenseless, vulnerable beings on earth. Still yet to find one. We can go through some though. Here's one personal choice. Who's got this one? It's my personal choice to eat animals, Joey. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Stop forcing your beliefs down my throat. Okay. If I was speaking up against child abuse, would you still say, Joey, stop forcing your beliefs down that child abuser's throat? No, meat eaters aren't child abusers. not what I'm saying. Okay. Don't twist what I'm saying. But if I'm speaking up against animal abuse, that's what I understand veganism to be. It's not some health journey for me. It was at the start, you know, I lost a lot of weight doing juice fasting, found out the, the power of plant-based foods. The ethics is what turns you vegan. And usually when you stop consuming the flesh of, you know, animals who suffered and, you know, all that fear, something wakes, I don't know if this is just conjecture, but something sort of clicks and you understand the ethics. Personal choice. It's my personal choice. Um, yeah, it is. It's, it, it's a choice. I'll say that. I'll say that much. It's a choice. So if someone says to you, jo uh, wh whoever it may be, it's my personal choice. Stop forcing your opinions on me. You know, you could say, well, your choice has a victim, so it ceases to be per personal, basically. You know, yeah, it's a choice. We have many choices in life. You can choose to exploit and abuse animals with your food choices, or you could choose a vegan burger. And there's many around, okay? Now, your health, is a personal choice. Eat vegan chocolate, eat the vegan junk food. I couldn't care less if you smoke vegan cigarettes. Okay, as long as, you know, but I, actually, you might, if your health, you know, you probably wanna be around to see your kids, as long as you're not harming anyone else by harming yourself, you know, that's fine with me. A real personal choice. Not one like, hey, you know, I'm gonna go buy some bacon, this pig's gonna get big gas chambered, six months old. Six months old, these pigs. Little children. Screaming, terrified, scared, covered in their own feces, screaming for death inside a dungeon filled with gas. You might say, well, it's sleeping gas. They just fall asleep. No, that, you know, a few years ago, that you might have been able to get away with that until some brave activists left cameras down there. And we seen just how gentle that sleeping gas really was. Horrible, horrible what it does. It burns inside their eyes. 
uh, the CO2. Carbonic acid, it's called, when it reacts with mucous membranes inside their lungs, inside their mouth, and it burns. You ever crack a can of Coke in your eye? Get that gas in there? Think about that. Even if it didn't hurt, though, you know, if it was gentle gas, we wouldn't put humans and gently gas them to sleep. Irrelevant how gentle the gas is, but it's still horrific to hear them scream and suffer. Suffering is bad. Using animals is the problem, though. Personal choice. Okay, so, I mean, you might, you might actually use that excuse yourself, which, you know, you might think, you know, people are infringing on my personal choice. That's not freedom. They're taking away my freedom by saying I can't eat my meat, you know. But, you know, that, that's great from your own point of view, but we're asking people to be altruistic and see it from... The animal's point of view. Where's their choice? Their choice has been robbed from them. You know, everything, their children have been robbed from them. Their choice to bear their own children and to live in, in, in peace and harmony is being robbed from them. This one is really common. Who can guess what it is? No. Close. It's on par with the food chain. Lions. Lions. There's many different ways of explaining how people will say, oh, lions eat other animals. Other animals eat other animals. In nature, the spider eats the fly. This is what I got when I was on the Good Morning Britain. Anyone see the Good Morning Britain show? Okay. The celebrity chef goes, the cat eats the mouse, the spider eats the fly. That's just the way it is. The food chain. Animals eat other animals in nature. And quite simply, if you were going to navigate your morality by the actions of the animals in nature, you'd be doing all types of crazy things and we could be justifying all types of crazy things, couldn't we? I mean, because animals kill each other in nature, they're in a very different scenario to, uh, to us. We're, they're in a survival situation. We are not, okay? We are not. We have plant foods. We can manufacture all of our food out of plants. We've got plant agriculture, that's fine. The lions aren't in the same situation. They, they do it out of necessity. Like, look, we could justify killing each other because lions, you know, kill each other or they have fights and they claw each other's face off or they, they go and you know, hunt down an antelope. We could use that same justification to hunt down human beings who we might deem as prey. Absolutely ridiculous. It's called basically, it's a logical fallacy. It's an appeal, it's a simple logical fallacy. You can look these logical fallacies up. It's one of the most common, it's an appeal to nature fallacy. You are saying basically that because it happens in nature, that it's moral or that it's even good. There, there's good things that happen in nature. There's also horrific things that happen in nature. So you can't go, nature justifies my, my moral behavior. It's crazy, it's, it's actually quite crazy when you think about it. Think about what other animals do to each other without consent. You know, they don't ask for permission before they start humping each other. They, 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 do all dis they, they don't act in a civilized way. We came to be civilized human beings. Civilized, compassionate, you know, sensible, you know. But it all goes out the window when we start trying to justify our abuse of animals for cheeseburgers. What would you say, like, if someone goes, well, you know, Joey, like, our ancestors have been eating meat for millions of years. You know what I mean? Like, ancestors, though. Like, and if you don't know, you just, well, well that, that's correct. Well, there's science against it, there's science to support it. I think the majority of science supports that we were eating, you know, meat for millions of years. You can't deny that, can you? I don't think it's wise to deny that. We have to be truthful. But, you know, our ancestors were doing a lot of crazy stuff. And what is an ancestor, really? What, what, 200 years ago is an ancestor? What, are you, is that 100 years ago, a century ago is an ancestor? Ancestors in World War II, gas chambering people? Well, well like, how much of what our ancestors did do we want to morally justify or use to morally justify our behavior? I mean, if you're going to use one, you have to use it all. You can't apply that logic. You can't say, okay, ancestors ate animals, so therefore it's moral for me to do it today, or therefore it justifies me doing it today. Ancestors were committing rape, you know, war crimes, murdering each other. I'm not going to use that to justify rape, war crime, and murdering each other today, though, because that's just crazy. You're crazy. No. You're going to use ancestors as a, as a justification for your actions. You either take everything they did or nothing they did. You can't use it. You cannot use it. It's a, it, it's a logical contradiction. You can't use it. So, yeah, I mean, it's, also, it's all about supply and demand. It's great to tell people about supply and demand if you're talking to them. Because a lot of people just, they, they, they might have learned it in school, but they might have forgotten it. These industries only exist because of the consumer, period. That, is, that, that sentence right there. 
I mean, people go, Joey, I'm going to go turn this farmer vegan, so he turns his farm vegan. Look, if that farmer turns his cattle farm, where he's ranching cattle for beef, into a vegetable farm, the demand for beef still exists. It's done nothing to the demand. You want to turn the farmer vegan because then he'll stop contributing to the other beef farms. That's great. But you know what's going to happen if he cut, shuts down his beef farm? The beef farm next door is going to get double the business. That's how it works. You shut down, not, oh my God, this slaughterhouse I've seen. Horrific slaughterhouse. We need to shut it down. You know what? The horrific slaughterhouse next door. There's no, no such thing as a good slaughterhouse. Okay? No such thing as a good slaughter. The slaughterhouse next door is going to get double the business. We target demand. That's how things change. The consumer. This is another one. What is, what am I going to, like, how am I going to make a difference? Like, if I stop eating animals, that's all good and well, but that's not going to change anything. Imagine if everyone on earth had that same mentality. Seven billion people. All like, oh, what, 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 what am, it's, it's called an appeal to futility. It's also a logical fallacy. I learned a lot of these online. <laughs> Ask yourself, hey. A, these are very important to know. Appealing to futility, it's, it's, it's futile. It'll never happen. So why should I change? Why should I stop committing a conscious act of animal abuse? Because other people are always going to commit conscious acts of animal abuse. Why should I not abuse that child? People are always going to abuse children. Doesn't matter if I don't. Apply the same logic. It's absolutely insane when you apply it in a different context. Think about that. I say people are always going to murder each other in war too. People are always going to be raping, you know, each other and those horrible things are always going to be happening, but you don't do it, do you? You don't do it because of there's, you know, you have your own, you know, moral code that sort of, and, and you will have your own victims. Everyone has their own victims. I had my own victims for 26 years, not just animals, human victims. I was going down a very violent path. Okay, I realized that, I stopped, you know? But imagine if my mentality was like, no, I'm not gonna get in these bar brawls and stop bottling people because there's always gonna be bar brawls. Like, everyone has their own body count. And it's about minimizing that as far as you practically can. So if someone goes vegan and they can stop, you know, a thousand animals, let's just say they stop 10, God, I mean 10. 10 animals being tortured, abused, bred into existence. I mean, if a thousand people did that, so that's the appeal to futility. Okay, this one here, I think we'll spend a little bit of time on. Um, Cause it's my baby. I love this one. Not, I hate it. It's the worst one. It is the worst, it's literally the worst one. If someone dared justify, you know, kicking a small child and said, well, don't you know, mate, like why are you so upset? The carrots that you eat feel pain too? Imagine that. Imagine if someone got a cigarette lighter and started burning a dog on the face. You know, doing something horrific to a dog, which people do do that. Sick people do sick things to animals. Let's just use a dog. And, you know, when you pulled him up and like, you, know, you might have pushed him off and said, what the hell are you doing? And he said, plants feel pain too. What's your problem? Imagine that. Imagine the uproar. Imagine you'd be in every single newspaper on earth. So that, I think that that's on par with the worst, I'm going to say, like um, comparing like a cow, a sentient cow, beautiful, beautiful animals they are, like they are so loving, so intelligent, they really peaceful, majestic, who's been to a sanctuary? Who's met a cow? Many people met a cow? Not many people, that, not many people have met a cow, you've got to meet a cow. Beautiful, or a, or a bull, a male, or female, cows are male, bulls are male. Really majestic, quiet, like, they're really timid, shy, beautiful animals. It's like something, there's someone in there and it's really, it's a beautiful experience. Comparing a someone to a bag of rice or, you know, a pot plant. Saying, oh, you know, that pot plant, you know, feels pain too, so therefore it justifies us holocausting trillions of animals every year ripping them out of the ocean, clawing their face like with a massive hook and just, you know, dra sometimes it gets them in the side of the head, they, they suffer on the side of a boat, you know, suffocate in a big bath full of ice, this is what we do to sea animals, horrible, horrible. And then people go, well plants feel pain too, don't, don't, you get off my back. Now, a big reason people say this, which is like, it's basically a misinterpretation of the science. 
Um, and everyone's heard about, you know, plants being intelligent. Really smart plants are, they're intelligent. They're not intelligent like a cow is intelligent, but they do possess their own intelligence. And I learned a lot about plant intelligence. And I think it's important as vegans, as advocates, not to dismiss how incredible the plant kingdom is. Amazing what plants can do. Trees communicating with each other, okay? They communicate some type of electronic pulse, communicating with each other, letting each other that there's know there's danger. It, they might harden their bark to avoid being attacked. They spray some type of pheromone in the air to avoid being eaten. They sense when they're being eaten, they might release some type of poison. All of these amazing reactions to stimuli in the environment. Now, plants have been evolving for thousands and thousands, longer than, I think longer than animal life, I'd, I'd suggest. I mean, plants can even learn, okay? So some, some leaves might have like a mechanism where they might close up when they're touched. There might be a drop of water touching on the leaf. I learned this the other day, I thought it was amazing, okay? And after a period of time, the drop, 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 the leaf recognizes that the drop of water isn't harmful. So it stops reacting to it. Amazing, right? Does that mean that the tree is a sentient being with wants, desires, and uh, needs? They want to experience well-being, avoid pain and suffering. There's an individual inside of there having a subjective experience with a personality. It doesn't mean that at all. It doesn't mean that at all. Trees are having intelligent reactions to the stimulus in the environment. That's it. They're like big unconscious biological computers. That's what they are. Okay, there's amazing things that your phone can do too. If you touch your phone screen, you know, it senses your feet. You could call, you could talk to Siri and Siri will answer. Your phone isn't a sentient being. Okay, you might say, well, plants are alive. Irrelevant. There's not a scientist alive that, believe, that believes that, that trees are having a subjective experience, like there's someone in there. It's absolutely ridiculous to suggest. And it's, it's, it's insane to put plant life on the same level as a cow. A pot plant. No one goes in to rescue a pot plant first from the fire, but they might rescue the dog if the, if the human beings are safe. I think we need to remember to draw the distinction between sentience and intelligence, okay? And sentience is really easy to explain because you are sentient, okay? You experience your reality, okay? If plants did feel pain, imagine if they did. They felt it and they were like, oh my God, that hurts. This person is hurting me and I need to escape. They're not going to get far, are they? They haven't evolved to avoid pain. So why would it make sense for them to be able to subjectively suffer? It just doesn't. It doesn't make any sense at all. And the only people who will say that there are some supernatural plants that are having these conscious... They're just... It's all sort of woo-woo science. There's no, you know, real... It's just basically misinterpretation of the actual science, okay? So... I like to say, is stabbing a puppy dog in the throat the same as cutting up a carrot? Of course it's not. If they see me stab a puppy dog, they'd probably punch me in the face. I would punch me in the face too. If they see me cutting up a carrot, they'd say, what are you cooking? So they don't even apply their own logic. They probably drive on grass and, you know, if they've seen a dog in the middle of the road and there was a, we all know the one where there's a lawn and the dog, would you swerve to hit the lawn or would you run over the dog? If plants feel pain, they wouldn't even be a distinction between the dog and the plants. And yes, you can say also that, you know, the, the animals they eat consume a lot more plants, but that's sort of playing into it, I think. You could say, well, if you care about plant life so much, you know, animals that you're eating are eating a lot more plants. It's like 16 kilograms of plant food for one kilogram of beef or something like that. I don't like to play into that because plants do not have moral value, okay? Plants do not have intrinsic value. The only value plants have is the value it gives to the sentient life on Earth, okay? The only reason the rainforest matters is because of the sentient life the rainforest supports, okay? You take the sentient life off of Earth, there's no capacity to experience well-being, there's no reason to worry about suffering, no one can suffer. There's rocks and there's plants, okay? Plant life matters because of the sentient animals on Earth, humans and other animals. Yeah. We wouldn't go to court and say, you know, Your Honor, I'm sorry, I just massacred about 30 people and I don't know why you're giving me a hard time. Your sandwich feels pain as well or the plants in your sandwich scream to death. It's just an insane...
an insane justification.